A2 Media Theories, Semiotics. What is semiotics? Semiotics is the study of codes or languages and the signs from which they are made, and this can include the written and spoken word. There are a range of codes which we have learned to read. For example, when we see a character shaking their head, we know they mean no. Um, semiotics has extended to many different areas. For example, the clothes someone wears or the car they drive sends a certain message and gives information to the viewer. For example, when you see a Porsche driver, they are seen as more wealthy than the driver of a Nissan Micra. Media language. Audiences read media language to understand messages. And media language can include colour, camera shots and angles, clothing, editing, and maze on scene, everything in the frame. Sassour, 1983, suggested there are three levels on which an audience read a media text. Okay. The first is the synactic level, where an audience identifies the basic denotations of a text. This is the most obvious level meaning, and it's where they describe what they can see, for example. So they might say the characters are, the, the filmmaker has used the colour blue quite a lot, etc. Second is the representational level, and this looks at the representation of characters or places in the text. So we'll be looking at how a particular character has been portrayed, or how a place is being portrayed. The last one is the symbolic level. This involves the hidden cultural or symbolic meaning that the text conveys to the viewer. Both the representational level and the symbolic level are examples of connotations, okay, which I know AS is what we've done quite a lot of. But the, and when you were doing that, you were looking at the representational and the symbolic levels of the text. A good example is Eastern cultural meaning of an overweight woman. For example, in some, in some Eastern cultures, an overweight woman has the connotation of being rich and wealthy. And as a result, will be and as a, on a symbolic level, they will be able to provide enough food for any future children that someone may have with them. Bass, 1967, developed this theory further, and explained that many an audience's understanding of media texts come from their understanding and knowledge of frequently told myths or stories. For example, the Cinderella myth. Many romantic comedies or rom-coms draw on this myth. I'll give you an example: a girl who is often poor or repressed in some way, is rescued from her miserable life or from poverty itself by the love of a rich, handsome man. Baths highlighted how the deeper meaning of fairy tales can be interpreted by the culture in which they are told in. For example, in the Cinderella myth, men are active while women are passive. So the men will save the day while the women sort of stand in the background, so to speak. Men are the powerful economic providers in the society. And while a woman's role is to be sexually alluring to men to attract them. However, remember, and Fisk in 1982 reinforced this idea, that I'm going to remind you here now, don't read connotations as if they are denotations. Codes are interpreted depending on the culture the viewer is in. Don't forget that they will change depending on what culture you're in. Your homework. Pick another myth or fairy tale, there are many to choose from, and find three films that example of this myth and explain how they demonstrate it. Don't just pick, and I'm going to make this point clearly, don't just pick a Disney film, okay? You can use that as a basis for the myth that you're going to do, so you might want to do, um, uh, let me think, you might want to do something like Sleeping Beauty or something like that, or Snow White myth, but you must look at it in other films. And don't just pick the modern version of them, so I know the Snow White and the Huntsman's come out, for example, don't just pick that. You want to see how the story is told. If you're really stuck, you can look at Cinderella myth if you want to, but I don't want you all just to do Cinderella. Think about it, okay? Signs. This is where we're moving on to a bit more work on the signs in a text. In a text, each sign has two parts. The signifier, the visible part of the sign, the thing we can see. And what it signifies, the signified. The idea, meaning or concept that is represented by the signifier. I will give you, we will do examples of these in class, so don't worry, but I just want you to know what the word terminology is, so when we do it in class you won't be so shocked. Remember though, the relationship can change between the signifier and what is signified. For example, the word fit used to be used to refer to someone's athletic ability, how you know um, physically fit they were. Now it is used to refer to how someone's sexual appeal. Um, the construction media text involves choosing particular exams, 
okay, from a choice of possible signs. For example, the choice of a signifier would change what is signified. So they might choose whether to use red or yellow for a woman's dress or in a, a character, sorry, woman characters in a film or a TV text. That will change what is signified by changing the colour. Okay. Another example is they might use a low angle camera shot to make a character seem powerful, while a high angle camera shot will make the character appear vulnerable. And they, if you notice in films and TV dramas, they often alternate between the two to represent what the how the character's position in the text. All right. Again, we will do examples of these in class, so don't worry. In A2 Media Studies, you must look at both how a chosen sign influences meaning and also why a particular sign has been chosen. Don't assume a media producer has chosen a sign just because it looks right. Everything is constructed for a reason.